impromptu theme music go. So now I have my own cable TV system in my house, streaming my own media files 24-7, and no set-top box required. It all started with a video from uh, C-Lab Retro, where he showed his own DIY home cable TV system. He was using old, obsolete, blonder tongue, analog television signal modulators to send his own TV broadcast signal to his old TVs in his house. I wanted to do this for myself. Uh, I love the idea of repurposing old tech in new ways. The problem with that, with what he was doing, what uh, C-Lab Retro was doing, is that everything is, is analog and requires old CRT TVs. It's an analog signal uh, with, that needs an old analog TV. I don't have any CRT TVs, and, and I don't want any. I have modernish flat panel LCD TVs. So that means I needed to be a digital TV signal. I kicked around on eBay, looking at other digital KB TV signal modulators, and they all seemed to start around 1500 bucks and up. And one that could take IPTV streams and rebroadcast them as digital TV signal, those cost like three to four grand. And I'm not about to spend that kind of money just so I can have old episodes of Samurai Jack or Stargate. Uh, finally, I came across a Blonder Tongue HDE 8C QAM for only 100 bucks. They use these in hotels, bars, restaurants, or the like. Uh, this one came from a college dorm. Uh, the specs say it requires a dish net set-top boxes as input devices, but it's got analog component inputs on the back, so that means I should be able to give it any signal I like. So I took a chance and bought it. On the QAM device, it will take eight component video inputs uh, and audio signals, uh, and then output a digital TV signal at 720p or 1080i. You can even define what digital channels you want to use. I used, uh, in my case, I used uh, 10.1, 11.1, all the way up to 17.1. It lets you set other things like video and audio recording bitrate. Uh, most of these other settings I left alone, and that uh, other than the channel number and a few uh, labels here and there. For my video source, I need something that could play video files off my NAS uh, and output to component video. I can use a Raspberry Pi as the player of VLC, so that you know covers that side of it. But then I needed these uh, HDMI component converter boxes I found on Amazon. Uh, I tried several different ones and settled on this one as the best solution. The powered ones are always better and more reliable anyways, even though they're a bit more expensive. And you have to manually set them to 720p at 60 frames. So now, whenever the whatever's on the Pi screen is sent to the QAM, you sit there and surf porn on the on the Pi. It's gonna go out to the QAM, uh, just like it's a monitor. You just need to enable HDMI audio out, and you're good to go. Now I just need eight converters and eight Pis. The next thing is video playout. I consider just getting some, just creating some uh, VLC playlists and just let them autoplay. And then I was searching around and I found Ursat's TV. Uh, EVT will do on-demand IPTV streams of your media. Uh, you create the list, it handles the rest. TV shows, movies, music videos, old retro commercials, it's all up to you. You can stream whatever you like. Uh, it will create a live playout schedule and even an XML guide feed. So I spun up an Ubuntu VM on my X C P and G server, installed Docker, and then ETV. I pointed it at my media files on my NAS. Oh, and before the copyright cops come knocking, I created eight channels of various themes, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Stargate, uh, the MCU, uh, showing all the movies and TV shows, animation, you know, like all Batman, Samurai Jack, Archer, all kinds of any, anything animated. And then a channel for my favorite TV comforts, you know, like West Wing or MASH or, you know, something I can just sit and watch in you know, Hogan's Heroes episodes. And then I did two channels of what I call Stone Classic Movies. These are uh, just, you know, they have like each one has a hundred different movies on it. And they're just, you know, comfort movies that I, you know, that I enjoy watching. 
pretty much any title, any year, any era. After some initial testing, I found that the IPTV playback uh, on the on the VLCs Pies was a bit wonky and stuttery. Uh, adding more CPU to the VM helped some, but it never got better. Especially when switching from 264 to 265 source files or vice versa, uh, it was just stuttery. So what I need is a GPU. My server, being a Dell rack-mounted server, has no GPU. I don't really need video output for gaming or whatever, just compute power. After all, ETV is just using FFmpeg behind the scenes to do the, the, the playouts. On the recommendation of some advice I got from our home lab uh, Discord, I picked up an NVIDIA G4 Tesla. These, these can be had on eBay for around 100 bucks. I got all the Ubuntu drivers for CUDA and whatnot installed the ETV Docker to use the NVIDIA version. And all my stutter problems went away. Smooth as silk playback on the Pies. Uh, I was even able to switch to uh, 265 encoding on ETV with no loss of quality. Back on the Pies, I created a systemd service that will kick off a bash shell uh, script that will launch VLC and play the specific file URL. Got a couple of cheap 100 meg switches as the Pi 3s are only, you know, 100 megs anyways. Next step was to run some coax from the QAM output into one of the wall jacks in my house. And then in outside in the junction box, I put a splitter to send that signal from that one room back into the house's other rooms. Uh, all staying within my house bounds. Nothing leaves the house. Next up, hook each TV to the wall via coax cable. And then have it do a digital cable TV channel search. Bingo. Eight channels of my own content available with just a TV remote. I have this muted so to prevent a copyright strike. All right, some caveats. I will probably mount all of this to a board at some point down the road. Uh, as for now, it's just on a table in a spare bedroom. It's fine where it is for now, but... At some point, I'll probably mount it all up on a board or something. Sometimes there's line noise or something on the HDMI converters uh, where the audio gets all garbled and staticky. I think this is a static electric buildup of some kind. I'm not sure where it's coming from as the system's grounded in the junction box. Power cycling the HDMI switcher seems to fix it. Uh, I put them all on a single smart plug for convenience. Uh, the ETV... Uh, is set to random generate schedules, meaning it just, you know, randomly picks a, you know, I give it a list of TV shows to, 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 you know, to spit out and it randomly generates a playout list for the next, you know, 20 days, but it's not shuffle. It's random. So I do see repeats when it should really be doing a mixed shuffle. A true shuffle is a random order without a repeat until it starts over again. I built a lot of Ansible playbooks to automate the building out of new pies, uh, copies all the files over, uh, sets all the settings, even sets the desktop background, uh, plus some other playbooks that manage system updates and reboots and whatnot. The ETV does generate uh, an EPG on-screen guide uh, as an XML. I'd like some way to incorporate that into the digital signal, uh, but it would need to do it after the signal exits the QAM, so at, you know, um, which means it needs to be a hardware device that would take coax in, do the insertion, and then coax out. And I've done a lot of Googling, and I can't find such a device. Uh, let me know if you know of something. As a bonus, if you spin up a docker of this, point one of the Pi's VLC at a classical music stream, Open up a Chromium browser and full screen, you have an actual weather channel. Anyways, that's my roll your own eight channel digital cable TV system. You kids have fun. I'm out. Be sure to like and subscribe or whatever or don't. What do I care?